doing all this time, man? What you what you been doing? Grandpa, married, kids? Yeah, yeah. You know, I I got a divorce about uh five five ten years ago or something like that, <laughs> and got married again. So I, I've been, you know, that you you hit it on the head, you know, chilling with my grandkids and raising my kids and and. and just just being a daddy and a granddad and you know enjoying life man now i'm getting that itch again now you know it it, it does something it does yeah. something. <laughs> how, long, how long you been how long you been on this off the set oh come on man Shit. the last uh situation that was in with doc i mean i guess my last real deal was with the aftermath situation that was at 98 what about what about gigs? What was your last time you doing a gig? Oh, I ain't been really doing no shows. You know what I'm saying? That's trying to get my legs back now, getting in the gym and and see it. You know I'm old now, man. You know get that I'm money. Gonna, just, you could just you know, stand on stage and recite bass, and everybody would sing every single word with you, bro. That's what I'm, I'm about to start doing. Just standing still. <laughs> <laughs> Mike stand one spot, not move. You know, arthritis kicking in, man. You know, <laughs> you know what, Doc? I, I watched y'all last night, man, and um, I watched everybody last night, yeah. and, and no, nobody rocked the crowd till you hit the stage, dude. The, the, the crowd did oh, not. You know, they, they tried to be supportive of the other folks, but when you came on, everybody knew all the words. They felt the groove. It was a whole, it got turned up just that fast. And when you, uh, when, you when you when you and Breeze left there after y'all got through. I watched yeah. my girl Zia. I watched my girl Zia. And I, I was out. I'm out. Yeah. yeah, it's all a blur to me. I, you know, <laughs> my wife told me I was, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I almost fell on the stage. I was so, you know, feeling good. Yeah, because yeah, I, you know, I haven't been out in a, in a while, so you know, I don't go out that much. So I gotta, I, I can't drink like I used to no more. So you, I gotta start taking it easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. DJ Domino talking shit, Lonzo. DJ Domino yeah, saying, "Yeah, Lonzo still stands on stage." <laughs> His big ass can't move. This motherfucker, you know, Domino, don't, don't fuck with me, Domino. Don't fuck with me. All yeah. right, don't fuck with me. I, I, I got you. I got, I got the whole card. I got the whole card. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, T, um, take us back to ninety five, ninety six. That was a real weird time in hip hop. You know, with the whole. Media created East Coast West Coast situation. I'm sure you were on the road. Um, talk to us about traveling at that time, and, and talk to us about you know the untimely deaths of Biggie and, and Pac. Well, really, I didn't I didn't do a lot of traveling. I because uh, I really my whole thing has been that was around the time '94 '95 that I got a, a, a me and uh, this kid Broadway got a, a production deal over at MCA Universal, and uh, I, I, my, my, I was trying to. I, my thing was sitting behind the desk around that time. I was trying to be an executive and and produce. The, you know, we had the Alcoholics exhibit. You know, we had the Liquid Crew and all that. So that was my thing back then. I wasn't doing too much traveling. I was trying to be the executive producer i did uh that one album king chief of life where i did the uh single uh dipping and um uh, uh way out there you know and that that was my that was my time trying to you know be behind the desk and put new acts together and things like that and produce so and that and, and i'm still doing that trying you know getting back into uh producing and, and finding new talent you know what i'm saying what were you um, what were you thinking when you're sitting back reading the magazine seeing the news stories and just kind of seeing this east coast west coast thing unravel hit him up comes out the biggie disses Pac on jay-z's out like all these little things and then unfortunately Pac dies and then biggie dies six years uh, six months yeah, later yeah I, I i saw it falling apart like you know and how the media was portraying it and things like that i you know i didn't put i didn't really mess around like that me me and Pac and and biggie were cool you know it, it was all sad and i kind of steered away from it you know uh you know it was just a sad situation but i i was in another lane man i was you know i stayed away from all that i didn't i didn't really go around all that it, it, i just saw it unravel and it, it was a sad situation 
how did you stay out of it? Shit. I stayed my ass in the studio and, and like I said, behind the desk. And, you know, I would go out sometimes and, and, and see Pac and, you know, when I was on the East Coast, I you know, because I worked a lot with, uh you know, I was working with Easy Mo B and he was producing both of them cats at the same time, you know what I'm saying? And, and I did, I used to be on the East Coast because, like I said, I had the King T for Life album on uh, MCA. And we went to the East Coast and recorded and worked with a couple of East Coast producers, uh, TR from Ultra Magnetic and uh, Nikki Nicole, the, the producer. And and I, I used to see Big out there. And I just played, they both were my friends, but I, I just didn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of, I stayed away from that. You know, I had my own problems, my own issues, you know what I'm saying? But I, it, was, it was sad how all that played out, you know. Art Chavez has a good question. He says, King T, what are your thoughts of hip hop? Uh, I'm reading that verbe as he's saying it. So what are your thoughts of hip hop of 50 years? And what does the music scene look like in the future for OG West Coast artists getting back into making music? Woo. I mean, I'm, I, actually, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving uh, what I'm seeing, you know. People said it wouldn't last, and, and here we are, you know what I'm saying? And I'm loving what the younger generation is doing. They're keeping it going, and, you know, uh, and, and but, you know, a lot of people have, you know, a lot of people have things to say about the new generation, but that's, that's what's keeping hip-hop alive, and that's what, you know, how we're able to survive 50 years, you know what I'm saying? And and got to keep going, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, all we got to do, I mean, how does it look for the future of OJ? I don't know. We got to get in there. We got to be able to adapt with the younger generation. We got to get in there with them and, and mm -hmm. work with them and, and hmm. you know, see where they're coming from. And, and I don't know if a, I'll be able to get on in, on one of them trap beats or whatever, but shit, I'm, I'll try. You know what I'm saying? I love music, man. If it's if it sounds good to me, like and and if it's music, good sounding music, I'm gonna play it. You know that's you know that's all I know. You know, I ain't got no hate in my heart. You know? Yeah, good. You were one of the um, founders, pioneers of reality rap that eventually was coined gangster rap. What are your thoughts on drill music? Are you familiar with the drill scene where these kids are going back and forth and there's guns involved and there's just uh, trash talking to an ultimate level where they're literally peeing on grave sites of their rival rapper friends and they're they're going, they're just doing really, are, are, you, are you keeping up with that side of hip hop today? Not at all. 